Okay, so in this video, we're going to start talking about arrays in C Sharp. So first of all, what is an array? An array is a group of variables containing values of the same data type. So in this example here, this array contains all integers. Uh, but rather than declaring five different variables, like numbers 1, numbers 2, numbers 3, numbers 4, we can create an array instead and in each of the elements we can store a value. All right, so what's an element? An element is each variable in the array. So this is the how you would access the this element here. It's the second element because we're starting from zero and the value contained in this variable called numbers one would be 44. Uh, the index is the position of the element in the array. Right, this is the um, the index here is one, which indicates the second position in the array. Right, so we have it in the second place we have a 44. In the third position in the array we have a 47. In the fourth position we have a 60, and in the fifth position we have a 12. The length is the size of the array. So the length of this array here is uh, is 5 because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 elements. Okay so to get started with arrays in C-sharp first you have to declare Declare the variable, the array variable. Next, you have to create the array. Then specify the size or the length. And the last thing is assign the array to the variable. Okay, so let me show you how to do that. So to declare the array variable, first we specify the data type. So int array with the square bracket, then the identifier for the variable, which we'll call it numbers to match our example. Then we create the array. So you use the new keyword and the type of array we want. We want an int array. That's int. And then you type the square brackets. Then you specify the length. So to match our example, our array length was 5. And then the last thing is assign the array to the variable. So, right, so we use the assignment operator right here and then of course your semicolon right so here we declared the the array variable here we created the array here we specified the size and then the last thing was we assigned it to the variable okay so the next thing we're gonna want is we're gonna want to write a method to display the values that are contained in our array. So to do that, we'll just do it here after the main method. We'll set it to public, static. And here what I want to do is I want to return a string. That string is going to have the values from the array. So string. And then we can give it some sort of name like display array. Uh, make this capital A. And we're going to want a parameter uh, so that way we can pass the array as an argument. So it's going to be int array. And we'll call it numbers.
Okay. Okay, so since this method is going to return a string, uh, we'll need a local variable called string output. And we'll set it equal to here I'm going to use the string class and I'm going to use the dot format method. And with the dot format method, we can actually have similar to console dot right line, we can have placeholders. So that'll help us format our output. All right, so we'll do a placeholder zero. We'll set the width to five. And then space, we'll have another placeholder and we'll set the width to that one as five as well. And then for the first placeholder, I'm going to want a string literal. I'm going to call it uh, index. And then for the second uh, placeholder, I'm going to want the um, string literal called value. Okay, so then the next thing is I'm going to want a for loop so that way I can concatenate the index and the value contained in each element of the array. So to do that I'm going to do for int I'm going to call the control variable I'm going to call it index and I'm going to start with the first element, so that's at zero. Then I'm going to want this loop to run while index is less than the length of the array. So the array is called numbers dot length. All right. So every time you create an array in C sharp, you have access to this property called length. Right, so any array you create, you can access this. So in our example here, the length is 5. So numbers.length would also equal 5. Right, if I passed an array of ints of size or length 10, I pass it to the method here, then that numbers.length would be 10 instead. Right, so it's better than having to put an actual l integer literal here. Right, because then we would only be able to work with arrays that are of size 5. Right? We want to work with any type of array when we write a method. So using dot length is a better idea. And then we want to increment the index. Right? We want to start at 0 and we want to go all the way to 4, similar to our example. Okay. So then here I'm going to do string concatenation. Right? So I'm going to do output. plus equals and I'm going to call the string class again use the dot format method and then for my string I'm going to want first of all the new line operator another placeholder with 5 space the second placeholder also with the width of 5 And then for this first placeholder here, I want to display the index. And then for the second placeholder, what I'm going to want to do is I want to use an array access expression. All right, so to write that, you're going to do num sorry, uh, numbers. And remember, we access each element in the array using the index. So here we have the control variable going from 0 to 4. So I'm going to use that as the index. So I'm going to use the control variable. And I'm going to remove this extra space here. 
right? So in the first placeholder, we display the actual index, so it'll display zero. And then here I actually access the value in the array using the position specified in the index. So because this loop runs from zero to four, it's going to show what's in the first element, then what's in the second element, the third element, the fourth element, and then the fifth element. And each time it does that, it will concatenate it or add it to the string variable that we declared here. So this first part here acts as the table header. And then it'll show index and it'll show the value in the array. So the last thing, once we have our output string formatted, then we're going to want to return the output. And then we're going to want to return it to the original caller, which would be from main. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to declare another local variable called string output. And I'm going to set it equal to the name of the method. I'm going to call the method here display array. And the reason there's an error is that display array takes an array argument. Right? It has an array parameter specified. So here our array is called numbers. So we'll use the variable to access that. And you just type the variable name. Numbers. Like that. So then this returns a string. And then that string will be stored in the output um, variable specified here. Right, A lot of students make the mistake of putting an index here right but that's not correct right once you have your variable set up then the only time you would use the square brackets is if you're accessing just a, a if you're accessing as, accessing only one member in the array but since we're passing the entire array to the method you just go by the variable name okay then we want to see the actual output on the screen. So here we would do console dot write line to display our output. And then here we can just pass the string. Okay, so let's see how this looks. Control F5. Right, so here's the first part of the output. It's the table headers, index value. Here's the index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The value shown is all zeros because we haven't um, we haven't assigned any values to the array yet. We're going to do that in the next step. We just want to have the method so you can see how it works. Okay, so let's close this out. So then these first two lines, we are displaying the values in the array before we assign them. Right, so that's why we saw a bunch of zeros. So now let's write a new method to input data or numbers into the array. So I'm going to declare a new method here. I'm going to make it public, static, it's going to be void, and we'll call it input data. And so that way the method knows exactly which array we want to use. We'll go ahead and pass it as an argument 
into the method. So we'll set up a parameter called numbers that the data type is an int array. So the input is going to be very similar to the way we displayed the data. We're going to need a for loop. So for int counter, set it to 0. We want the counter to increment while it's less than the length of the array. And then here we'll increment the counter. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to ask the user for input. That input will put inside each element of the array. So we look at our example. Right, we want to ask the user for number 0 and then we'll put a 43. We want to ask for numbers 1, we put 44. We want to ask for numbers 2, we put a 47. We want to ask for numbers 3, we put 60. And then finally, numbers 4 is 12. But rather than using integer literals here, uh, we'll use the control variable to access each element. Okay. So first, to get input from the user, we need to ask for the input. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is do the prompt console dot write and then enter or please enter. We'll do numbers and we'll actually display the elem, uh, the index as a placeholder. Okay, so then this will prompt the user to enter a value. Please enter numbers and then it'll start at zero and then go all the way to four. So then we need to get the input from the user. So then again, we'll need a array access expression. So that's numbers. Counter. then console dot read line All right so here the user is going to input some sort of value that value is going to be converted to an integer that integer is going to be assigned to the first element in the array then the loop will run again then counter will be one so then the same thing will happen and then we'll store it in the second place in the array, and then the third, and then the f and then the fourth, and then the fifth. Okay, so then now let's go ahead and use our new method that we just defined. And since it's a void uh, method, we can just call it. So input data. And which array do we want to store our values? So that would be numbers. Okay. So then once we input that, then what we're going to want to do is again, we want to reassign output. So remember we have this string called output here. Then we're going to want to call display array again. And then one more time, display it to the screen. OK, so let's see what happens. Control F5. OK, so we display the initial array, all zeros. Now we call input data 
numbers. So then now we're being prompt to enter the different values. So we're starting at the first element, that's 0. All right, so let me see what my values were. OK. So the first one's going to be 43. Then the next one is 44. 47. 60. And then 12. And then when I press enter, it should display the new values in the array. All right, so here you go. So for index 0, we have a 43. For index 1, we have 44. Index 2, 47. Index 3, 60. And then index 4, a 12. OK, so let's say for, I'm going to close this out. Let's say for input data, I didn't use a for loop. All right, so then how would I write a method to allow the user to input values for each element in the array? So I'm going to go ahead and comment this out. OK. So to do that, I would have to ask, ask for it four times. So it would be something like this. So then here I would have a 0. Okay, so then this would be the first element starts at zero. The first, the second element starts at there. And then I still need two more, or one more, I'm sorry. <clears throat> All right, so that's how you would have to do it if you didn't use the for loop. Uh, it's more typing, uh, but just just give you a different example. So then now let's run it again. All right, so again we have our initial array. Then 43, 44, 47, 60, and 12. Right, it still works, but as you can see, it's way more typing, right? And more than likely, if you have to type so much, you run the risk of running an error. So I'm going to comment this out. I'm going to go back here and uncomment, right? I like the for loop better. I hope you all like it as well, better than doing it this way. But either way, it works, right? The only difference is for the index, we're using the control variable of the for loop, right? And it allows us to type much less. It's easier to read once you understand all the syntax, of course. OK, so the next thing I want to talk about is using creating an array but rather than getting an, a method to input each value, uh, we could actually use an array initializer instead. And then we can pass integer literals. OK, so let me show you what I'm talking about. OK, so I'm going to use an array initializer. Initializer. I'm going to create a new array. I'm going to call it, uh, OK, so it's int. I'm going to call it sales. 
and rather set than setting it to new in let's say 10 rather than doing that and then asking for 10 different values let's say I already know the values beforehand uh, I can use an array list instead so I can do something like 70 80 90 77 60 50 23 190, 56, see how many values that is. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, maybe one more, just to make it 10. 340, semicolon. All right, so if you know the values beforehand and you don't need to ask the user for them, then you can just go ahead and use an array initializer. Right, it'll set up the array variable and it'll automatically create an array of size 10 or however, however many elements are already in the list right so here we have 10 elements so we'll set up an array of size 10 or of length 10 okay and then since we wrote our display array method and the counter, we use the length rather than um, an integer literal like 5 or 10. Then we can go ahead and display this array regardless of its size. So let me show you that real quick. I'm just going to copy this code here. Paste that there. Uh, but instead of... Instead of numbers, I'm going to pass sales. And just very briefly, I'm going to comment all this out. And then, oh, oops. OK, so just to show you, it works. Right, so we use the same method but to display a different in uh, array instead. Okay, so let me undo the commenting. Okay. All right, so the other thing I wanted to show you was how to use an array as a private instance variable in a class. All right, so I created a class here called salesperson. All right, and basic stuff, property here. So we have string name and we have property. But for the salesperson, I also want a, a private instance variable of an array. So I'm going to do int square brackets. And I'm going to call it sales. And I'm going to create a new int array of size 10. For the array for now, we won't need um, we won't need a property for it. Actually, there is no property for an array. You would have to use something else called an indexer. And that's probably later on in a different chapter. So for now, we won't worry about it. Of course, you still need properties for all your other um, instance variables. But if you use an array, uh, you won't need a property for that for now. Okay, so let's say I want to create a constructor for salesperson that takes two arguments. It takes name and it takes a in, uh, an integer array. So let me show you how to write that. So that's going to be public. 
the constructor is the same name as the class. Okay, so this is the constructor. And we want two parameters. We want string name and we want the um, private instance variable, the array, the array of ints. So that would be int square brackets and we'll call it sales. Okay, so to initialize an instance of salesperson through the constructor. For name, of course, it's the standard. Call the property, assign the parameter to the property. All right, so this name here is this guy here. But then what do I do with this? Well, you just assign it the same way. So this private instance variable called sales is the parameter sales. But then we have an issue. Assignment made to same variable. Did you mean to assign to something else? Right, so this parameter and this private instance variable both have the same name. Right, so that's an issue. Right, so what am I referring to? This sales here is this thing here on top. Right, so to specify that, use the you use the this keyword, this dot, and then the access member operator gives us access to all the members of the class. Right, so we have the private instance variable name, we have the property name. We have the private instance variable uh, of type integer array. So this is the one we're referring to. We're referring to this. right? So you do this.sales equals the parameter sales. So now it knows what we're talking about. All right? So this thing here is the parameter. This one here, as you see, it's highlighted on top, is the instance variable, right? So I'm setting them equal to each other. OK, so let's say I want to create a method to calculate all the sales and get a total. All right, that's very easy to do with an array. All right, so we'll set the method to public. We'll return the total and we can call it something like calculate total. And then we can pass the array as an argument. OK, so this method will return the total. So that's int total. And we'll initialize it to 0. Because at this point, before we add anything up, our total starts at 0. OK, and then here we can use a for loop int counter, set it to the first element in the array, while counter is less than sales dot length, counter plus plus, and then here we'll start accumulating all the sales, all right? So total equals total plus sales 
counter. Right, it could be written this way, or if you don't want to type total twice, you could also just write it like this, plus equals sales. Right, it's the same thing. Whichever one is easier for you to understand. Right, so total starts at zero. When the loop runs the first time, it'll get the first sales added to the total. So let's say it was 100. Then the loop runs again. So 100 plus whatever is in the new, um, in the second position of the array. So let's say there's 200. So then 200 plus 100 would turn convert total to 300. All right, if you understand how the plus equals works, then this code might be a little bit easier for you to read. But some people may not like it, or it might be more difficult to understand. So you can also write it like this, right? So total plus sales counter. All right, and then you reassign total. And since everything is evaluated from right to left, then this operation will happen first. And then the assignment or reassigning the total value. Okay. And then once you have the total accumulated, then we can return the total to whoever called it. Okay, and then for salesperson, I'm going to also want to create another method to display the data contained um, in an instance of the salesperson. Right, so I'm going to do public void display data. And then I'm going to display, first of all, the name. I'm going to put a placeholder, call the name property, and then here I'm going to want to display the sales total. I'm going to placeholder. But rather than creating a variable to hold the total, here in the right line statement, we can simply just call the calculate total method. So calculate total. And this method takes an argument of an array. So I'm just going to pass the sales to it. Right, so this method will be executed first. Then whatever the result of that is will be displayed in this string here. Okay, so let's test out our salesperson class. So go back to array test. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create an object of salesperson. So salesperson obj equals new salesperson. And our constructor takes two arguments. It's going to take a name. And since we haven't asked for a name from the user, um, just for this example, I'm going to use a string literal. So something like uh, Bobby. And then the second argument is an array of ints. So we have an array of ints here called sales. So we'll use that. So sales. OK, so now we have a method called obj. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we have an object, yes, called obj. So then now let's access um, the display data method for this object. So 
obj dot and then we want display data okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and uh, up to this point here I'm gonna comment this out so we can use the comment button okay so I don't want any of this code to run here make sure I put back string so then first we'll display the sales and then here we'll display the name in total so control F5 all right so here was all the values the name is Bobby the total is a 1036 so that's the total of all these sales